With the release of the Nectar CS12, which looks like an amazing control surface, I wanted to talk about how we can maybe breathe some life into some of the other controllers, which aren't quite as tightly integrated into Logic, but uh, perhaps you have sitting around or have used or are looking at buying uh, that may be even more affordable in some situations. We are looking at the M Plus a little bit. That's the one that I use in my setup, and uh, it's about the same price as the CS12. Uh, it doesn't have the tight, tight integration. It works with Mackey Control and Hui, but what we have with this are some really significant options to help us still control a lot of our software. So with this, one of the things that we're gonna be looking at um, are just the basic, two basic areas with the, uh, the control that we have. We have a lot of buttons, but uh, I wanna look primarily at those eight rotors and the eight faders. The faders are motorized, which is really nice because it gives us another visual representation of what's happening. But um, those rotors are just so-so in terms of the resolution. They're not like incredibly high quality. Uh, and sometimes I'm gonna wanna put some of that data down on the faders instead of just on the rotors. So we're gonna look at these two main areas for a little bit, um, specifically how we can flip them back and forth. Now, this is something I've seen online, people saying, well, I've got a Mackie control compatible device, but it doesn't have all the features. It doesn't have all of the implementation of Mackie control. That's the case with this. We don't have all of the, the features with it, but we have enough. And most importantly, when I first purchased this, one of the main things I wanted uh, was the software that accompanies it that let, lets us customize some of these buttons and what they do. And so that's where we're gonna be spending some time with. Specifically, I want to make this little button the flip button. So that's gonna flip what's on the rotors down to the faders. Right now it says mixer, uh, that's the default that it comes with, but we can customize that. So we are gonna look at that. We have this software that comes with uh, this controller and you can click on any of the buttons and down below you can assign MIDI and things to it. And so that's where we're gonna start with this. Uh, let's take that button and make it anything we want. In this case, we want to actually make it the flip. Let's load this up. Okay, so right now, the control mode that it's in is Mackey, but I'm gonna do user define. I am gonna connect the, the software to the controller, which I have to do each time I load it up. And then I'm gonna to go to this button right here. And you can see each of these. So this bottom one's right, this one is read. And right now it says transport or something. But um, what I wanna do is come to the list of all the options and I'm going to make this flip. And then I'm gonna send the data over to the controller. It says mapping is sent. Now, when I'm working with this, um, right this moment, if I move a fader, it moves a fader up there. And if I move a fader on the software, it moves on the hardware, they're decent. The motorized faders are decent. They do make a little noise. Uh, and so they're not totally smooth. If I'm gonna be doing any recording, I'll turn this off if it's in the same space as the microphone kind of thing. When I'm moving though, they do feel nice. They have a, the, a nice little bit of weight and resistance, just the right amount. So it feels like I'm doing something. I really like being able to move multiple things uh, and have that tactile experience with it. So I like that. So let's go over and push the mixer button, which is the flip button. And now when I move the fader, you're going to see the panning moving. So I just switched the panning with the volume. Here 
is the next thing. What we want to do is be able to take these different options and tie them to our smart controls. Now, smart controls, if you've ever noticed, there's always eight parameters, which lines up perfectly with a control surface like this, which has the eight rotors, but it also has the eight faders. And so it's a perfect thing. Um, Mackie control, especially when paired with logic, uh, does allow us, so logic is actually accounted for this, it allows us to control those smart controls. Sometimes on some of these uh, Mackie compatible controllers, there'll be a mode button. This one doesn't have that. We don't have the ability to go through a bunch of modes. It's not really designed like that. In this case, um, there are some things we can do with uh, with this and actually set it up for DAW specific functionality. But um, what we really want to look at is the functionality and logic. So we're going to come to our control surfaces and we're going to do controller assignments. And under the V pots, these are the, the rotaries. Um, you'll see right now set to pan surround. Well, these are all the different presets we have in here, and I'm actually gonna come down near the bottom and say smart controls. That little dot at the beginning um, makes it so we know that that's the active, uh, the active functionality here. So I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna open up smart controls for this first instrument. And now, when I go to my rotors, you'll see that it's controlling the knob. Now it's not, terrific resolution. And that's a function of this rotor. They're not, I mean, it's really a panning thing and they've decided, you know, that it can be the lowest resolution needed, but we might have more needs for this. And so it really doesn't make sense to do all the smart controls on the knobs. At this point, we can push that mixer button again since we made it the flip functionality. And now I've got all the knobs of the smart controls on my faders. And since they're motorized, they snap to the current data that's there, and then we can move it around and it will, it'll do that. Okay, here's the other part to this. We still have all the other buttons which are separate. I'm gonna click on select for channel two, and then the smart controls for that one snap into place, or we can go to number three and the smart controls snap into place for the drums. We can adjust the drum levels, the compression amount, the effects, tone, and room. And so now we have an actual real world application for the smart controls. If you're using a certain number of smart controls in a project, you could always create your own um, combination of smart controls. You don't have to just use the default. However, the default tends to be a good set of the functionality that we might be using. And they're going to adapt when we add more and more functionality uh, or processing to the thing. So right now, so EQ doesn't show up in smart controls because it has its own separate thing. And I tend to use, there's so many parameters. I tend to use my iPad logic remote. If I need the control surface type uh, feel for that, there's just not enough on the M plus, and I guarantee there's not quite enough on the CS12 to really do all of the parameters in a way. There's a bunch of knobs, but um, there's not one for every single parameter. So I'm still gonna be using my Logic Remote for the EQ. Let's though throw on, just so you can see this, how it changes. We'll put on a distortion, like a bit crusher, right? Let's take off the compressor for a second. And you'll see all of this switched over to the bit crusher. So there is a hierarchy in this and it's going to change depending on what plugins are there. Um, it will always try to, to do this in a way that makes sense, but it's not always possible. Um, the other thing that it's going to try to do, let's um, load up just a random synthesizer. Uh, some of these work more obvious than others. Um, let's pull out the bit crusher for a second as well. And there we have synthesizer controls now for this. 
There we go. So cutoff frequency, resonance, attack, release, uh, all of these things are now showing up on the smart controls. So there's a little bit of give and take as you're doing that, but that's a really nice way to be able to do this. The last thing I'll show you, because we do have a flip functionality inside Logic itself. Um, so the minute we have like a reverb bus, right? We have a bus number two here. Uh, we can turn on sends on faders, which is a flip functionality. And now you'll see, I'm gonna push the mixer button on the control surface to go back into normal fader mode. And now I can move the gold fader up and down. And this is adjusting my level to the sends. So I can adjust how much reverb is going out based on the location of the fader. Uh, we have uh, the ability to set these up as headphone mix and do a headphone mix on our faders. Anything that's on a send can now be put easily on the faders uh, using this functionality in Logic. So we have the sends on faders in Logic, the flip on the control surface, the ability to control the smart controls, which can be flipped back and forth between the rotors and the faders. And we have a lot of ability to control what's happening on uh, our individual tracks inside Logic. I hope that all made sense. I hope this is something that's useful for you because I do believe that this uh, tool, having a control service can be really beneficial, but only if you're smart about it, only if you're using it in a way that makes sense. If you just get uh, an eight channel fader bank like this, and want to do mixes, it's not likely you're going to use them all. Mixing multiple channels simultaneously, even with automation, is tricky. And um, while you can get good at it, is it really going to help based on that time? Well, now that we can use it for automation, for panning, for smart controls, for send levels, this becomes a tool that is multi-purpose, highly functional, and uh, you just need to be able to understand how to do that. Hopefully this is useful, and uh, this little set of videos we're doing on control services, you'll find uh, useful in your own workflow. Let me know in the comments if there's other things you'd like to know about, and we'll go on from there.